Hello, my beautiful Aquarian friends, and welcome to your horoscope for December of 2020, where this is our last monthly horoscope of 2020. So a little bittersweet, but I'm grateful that we have traveled 2020 together. So if you've been with me all year long, thank you so much for being a part of the journey. And if this is your first time here, thanks for popping in, stopping by, and uh, let's see what December's got going on. And I definitely can't wait to see what's going on and walk with you through all of 2021 as well. Now, Aquarius, the truth is this month, it's the like Aquarian extravaganza. This is where things kick off for you and get you set up and in position for this next two years. So it is a big month. One of your ruling planets, Saturn, is coming home into your sign. Jupiter's coming along as well. Not to mention we've got an eclipse that's happening this month. Mercury is out of bounds. So there is a lot, a lot, a lot happening. And I want to just walk you through that and make it quick, simple, and easy, okay? But first, I want to remind you that the Eat and greets will be continuing on as we're here in December and we've got beautiful guests coming over. Patricia Walsh will be here, Ali Gully, Linda Bird, Kira Sutherland will be here, um, Victor Oliver will be here talking about Dragonic Astrology, Peter Burns will be here talking about astrology and palm reading. So if you're into that, that'll be a beautiful connection we can make from our, our friend in the down under. Sally Ducharme will be here, Rose Marcus, uh, Michael Bartlett will be here as well talking about your maverick planet. So if you don't know what those are or you want some more investment, investigation. I would love to see you in the eat and greets. And keep in mind that with the eat and greets, you can always watch them ad free by joining me over on Patreon as well. The Patreon will continue to expand with some exclusive content for patrons on that side. You can also just watch the eat and greets right here on YouTube as well. Either way, love to see you at the eat and greets and can't wait to bring these awesome astro friends over to visit with us. Okay. All right. Let's get in here, Aquarius. It's a busy month. So right at the beginning of the month, the one thing I want to tell you is as we're in the beginning of this month, your 11th house, house is packed and powerful, which is beautiful because you're the natural ruler. You're the natural sign that lives in the 11th house space. So being in that very social space or having energy move through the 11th house is like, you know, duck to water for you. So it's really a lovely kind of energy. And not to mention that what we've got going on is the seventh the 11th house for you is ruled by Sagittarius. So this is that mixture of fire and air, essentially, when we think about the two of you. So that rolls together like butter, okay? So as we come into the month, just know that the 11th house is very, very busy. December 1st brings Mercury into the energy of Sagittarius. So lighting up communication, busyness, conversation, happening through this 11th house, new ideas, new truths. You have to be very open-minded with your friends, with your groupings, with social groupings out in the world world for sure. That's going to be a really, really big thing. Love and tolerance. Love and tolerance, my friend. Let me just remind you of that, okay? It's going to be a time too where in your social grouping, social alliances with friends as we get to December 14th and we welcome in the new moon solar eclipse for you. Yes, it is the new moon where you'll get to plant these seeds of intention and say, okay, what's my right social grouping? Who are my friends? Where's my tribe? Do I have that? Socially in the technological world, am I up to date? Those are all beautiful questions that will be able to unfold as you manifest them um, at this moon over this next six months. But I also think that this particular solar eclipse, if you do not align in terms of your philosophy and your ideas with your friends specifically, I do think some friendships, if they are weak, will definitely fall off, or at least they'll begin to really be tested under this energy to see if they are the right fit. And it is not that you have to believe the same way as everybody, but in your close friend and tribe circle, you want to be supported so that you can grow spiritually and be very tolerant of all of the opinions that are out there. So I wouldn't be surprised at all if this moon or over this next six months, you don't really see that some people are also falling out. Now, the 11th house is also your long range goals and desires for yourself. So what do you want for yourself? Aquarius, where would you like a little bit of accolade? Where would you like to be known for something? Because we're also known in that 11th house as well. But also just what are your long term aspirations for yourself? This energy has got you busy thinking and crafting that for sure. Now on the 15th, we've got a little bit of a busy day. We've got Chiron, our wounded healer, right? 
the hole in our soul where we struggle because it hurts when somebody pushes on our pain here. Um, this energy is going to be coming out of retrograde and coming direct. And so what you've been working on and reevaluating is your identity. And this is very much so the identity about how you communicate, how you show up in the world, how you speak, how you present yourself, your thoughts, your thought life, even things around your siblings have been really huge when it comes to this identity piece right now. So as Chiron is out of retrograde, not only do you get the opportunity to start to stand on some principles that actually guide your identity, but you maybe will find yourself helping someone else even define themselves in this area. Now, I do think if you have children, I would watch what's happening between your children because something around siblings seems like somebody's trying to work out something in the identity or maybe they're being challenged there and you might be able to be a really, really good resource to them at that time. Also on the 15th, we've got Venus coming into Sagittarius, so really magnetizing that 11th house space. So the friend Friendship groupings, the social things, opportunities to make money or connect with relationships via the 11th house become really, really prominent for you at this time. Now on the 17th, we've got Venus coming, we've got Venus, we've got Saturn, one of your ruling planets coming into your sign for a haul. It's going to be here for a couple years now. So this sets the stage for you. This sets the stage for what you're going to work on for the next two years. Now I ask you, Aquarius, when you go back to between March and July of 2020 here, what happened for you? Besides a pandemic, what was happening for you? Because Saturn is not just coming as this terrible taskmaster, but as he came into Aquarius at that time, you got a shake and you got a shift and you went, whoa, I've got to, um, I got to clarify my goals. I got to clarify what I'm doing. I got to clarify who I am and how I'm showing up. And I've got to really take some responsibility for my life and myself and how I look even physically with this particular energy. You had to get pretty serious because something was thrown into your face and it maybe even was how social you are in the tech world, right? Because that could have definitely been a thing. But now over this next two years, Saturn is going to crystallize those lessons for you. And also the hard work that you've done, Saturn is going to drop some blessings at your door because Saturn does bring those rewards when the hard work has been done for sure. Now on the 19th, we see Jupiter coming into Aquarius and Jupiter is much more comfortable in your sign than he was in the energy of Capricorn because he can really expand here. So your ability to take your wisdom and to take you and your presence and your idea and your face and, and your all of these things out there and expand into the world and expand your identity, maybe even beyond where you thought it could be. I think this is a beautiful energy for you. I will tell you, I think that because this is in your first house, you maybe want to be mindful with Jupiter here as well because this is an energy where Jupiter can expand the body, right? You could find yourself putting on a little bit of weight. And my goodness, Venus is over there in Sagittarius right now. The ruler of that Sagittarius social house just came into your sign. So your ability to expand is quite abundant under this energy. So just be mindful of it, know about it, and um, moderation, if that's even a thing. You know? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now, on the 20th, we see Mercury coming into the energy of Capricorn. And on the 21st, it's a busy day because we've got the sun coming into the energy of Capricorn as well. So bringing light, heat, life, and vitality to this very busy Mercury communication that's happening back here in your 12th house space. And it's busy. When the 12th house is busy, we're buzzing with spiritual information right? But this is the thing. Saturn has already been working on you spiritually, working on those things that are hidden, working on having you in a hidden, quiet house, right? So you are refined over here. The energy that's coming here is almost like, you know, after after you, you've done the best workout of your life and you go check out your body in the mirror, you're like, I killed it. I absolutely killed it. So I really feel like Mercury and the sun being here are just a blast of vitality for you back here. Now, of course, because it is still the sun bringing energy to this 12th house space and it's Mercury, it's great for research. It's great for conversations. It's great for having conversations. You know, let's say you had a family member that was in jail or in an institution or something like that. Maybe you're having a really great communication with them or you're having to communicate with them, right? Whatever it is that walks between the worlds, that spiritual experience is available for you there. There's also a brilliantly creative energy, but the whole point of it is, is that in the energy of Capricorn, whatever you're doing, it needs to be productive. It needs to really achieve something if you're talking about it or engaging your energy. And if it does, even if it just is a solid meditation practice, if you are omni padme oming yourself into a state of rightness, as long as it is productive, 
that's the way to go, okay? Now, the sun coming into Capricorn also tells us that we're at a solstice. So some of our friends will be coming into summer. We here in the United States will be coming into the winter solstice. This is our signal for a change of season. We are changing season. We are changing direction. The energy is able to move forward. We've got majority of the planets forward. So this is a beautiful change and sense of direction shift for us. As well, on the 21st, we've got Saturn and Jupiter coming together in conjunction, the grand mutation. The grand mutation, it's happening here in your sign. So literally, at a social level, we are mutating. We are becoming something next. We are moving out of that energy of heavy earth into fixed air, your energy, the ideas, the tech, the sciences. Um, you know, we're going to take a disciplined approach to how we do technology and social groupings and social ideas and community. But this is a big deal because not only do we change at that social level, but the mutation that comes for you personally is because society makes a crack, makes a space that Aquarius in your ideas are now, it fits in there perfectly. So I don't think it's going to be the easy peasiest here in 2021, but this is certainly a great start to this mutation and this change of energy that is definitely at our doorstep on the 21st. Now, as we close out this month and we get ready to close 2020, we're going to end with a full moon happening in the energy of Cancer. This is going to light up your sixth house space. Now, something I wanted to tell you to just be mindful of is with this full moon, it says something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. So I do want you to pay a little bit of attention to your health, even your mental health and wellness, okay? Please make sure you're sleeping. Please make sure you're hydrating. Please make sure that you are moving your body. Cancer is a cardinal energy, and they do like to move and be in shape and be well. So please make sure that you are taking care of that physical body. But also in your daily routine, I would ask you to look at if it needs an adjustment. In your resource allocation, do you have the energy to make it through your day. Now, something else I think of in resource allocation is not only not overbooking your plate, but spiritually, are you solid enough right now to make it through your day without feeling like you're just dragging or dreading or waiting for the other shoe to drop? That is a question of, I think, a little bit of spiritual tending, which gives you that boost of vitality to make it through the sixth house day-to-day -day routines for sure. Now, this is in the energy of cancer, so one last thought I have about it is maybe you are having to be of service to a parent or a family member under this moon, and in the next four weeks, you would know if that's something that's probably coming up and onto your table okay all right the aquarius extravaganza begins december 17th and we will watch your energy guide us to what's next it's absolutely beautiful so i can't wait to see what's happening for you i can't wait to be a part of what's happening for you and i can't wait to see what we create in 2021 but first i can't wait to see what you do and what happens for you here in december all right aquarius like this video comment share subscribe i love you so much and i look forward to seeing you next year Bye, Aquarius.